Hi there everyone, we're somewhere new today. We're at the Royal Astronomical Society at Burlington House, full of space treasures, things relating to astronomy. I'm here with the boss of the library, this is Sean, and we have something here that, well, this is going to be a little bit familiar to some people because it seems like we make a lot of videos on this channel about pieces of wood associated with a particular tree, but this is going to cast it in a whole new light. Sean, you start off by telling me what this is. Well, basically, this is a piece of apple wood. That is something that we definitely know. It was given to the society by a Mr. Walker in 1912. And Mr. Walker believes that it came from an apple tree that was growing in the garden of Woolsthorpe, which is where Isaac Newton used to live. This is the apple tree. You've heard about it before. Isaac Newton, sun baking in the backyard, whatever he was doing, sees an apple fall off the tree and thinks, ah. Well, that's apocryphal. Well, I don't know. We've got a previous video about that. There is some reason to believe maybe it's true, but there's a lot of reasons to believe maybe it's not. Anyway, look at this. Off comes the cover and I can see a whole bunch of rings. If we were clever, we could probably do some sort of dating and things like that. Oh, but definitely. Yeah, I don't think we're tree experts enough, but have a look here. We see a bunch of rings. Let's have a look at the other end of the piece of wood. This has got a little label on it. It says, a piece of the tree at Woolsthorpe from which Sir Isaac Newton saw the apple fall, which suggested to him the theory of gravitation. There's a big claim there. It is a big claim, and this is the same handwriting as the letter by Mr. Walker, where he's explaining the background of the tree. This letter, which has got a stamp on it here saying January 20, 1912, C.W. Walker. Oh, he's written it the day before. It only took a day to get here. Yeah, amazing postal service in those days. Yeah, and he says here, I'm today forwarding the piece of wood by post. I like this little part here too. I may add how much pleasure it gives me to send this, as in case of my death, it might not be recognised as being of any value and so be destroyed. So he was basically worried he was going to die and they were going to chuck it on the fire. Yeah, because it is basically an unprepossessing but high quality looking piece of dense apple wood, which is ideal firewood. Ah, so they, they probably would put it on yeah, the fire yeah. then. Also, what Walker has enclosed with the letter here is sort of a tale of where the piece of wood came from, how it came to be in his possession. And this abstract has also been typed up and is displayed permanently here with the piece of wood. My father, Richard Walker, was born at Bradmore, Nottinghamshire, in 1807. He went to school when he was 10 or 12 years of age to the clergyman of Stoke, Lincolnshire, named Pearson. My father told me that while he was at school there, there was a very severe storm of wind one night and that in the morning, news came that Sir Isaac Newton's apple tree had been blown down at Woolsthorpe. The schoolmaster, Mr Pearson, and several of the boys at once set off for Woolsthorpe. When they arrived there, they saw the old apple tree lying on the ground. He said he did not know by what authority Mr Pearson acted, but that he obtained a saw from somewhere and sawed a good many logs of wood from the branches. My father got one of these pieces, which he always kept as being a most interesting relic. So basically they're just looting. They basically did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I also find it interesting though, you know, there is an apple tree still at Woolsthorpe and people always talk about what happened to this apple tree and yeah. seeds and pieces of wood that have come from the tree. But we have here an account of the apple tree in Newton's yard being blown out of the ground yeah. and cut up. So presumably that was the end of the tree. There's some research to be done here, yeah, clearly. Is, yeah. I need to do a bit more research on the apocryphal story of the apple inspiring the theory of gravity but it's a way into the subject, that's what my, my colleagues say, it's a way into talking about what might have inspired Newton to, to come up with the theories that he did. What Sean just read to us here is from the abstract that Walker included, but there's a little bit more that he's written afterwards, which I think objectivity viewers might find interesting, because apparently Walker's father also told me that at the same time he remembered seeing the sundials made by Sir Isaac Newton still fixed in the wall of his house. These, however, have since been removed, I believe, to the British Museum. And people who've seen some of our earlier videos may know that we have shown people one of these sundials that used to be fixed to the wall. But here we go. This is yet another, and I think the biggest piece of wood from Isaac Newton's apple tree that we've seen so far. This episode of Objectivity was made possible by 23andMe, a personalised genetic service 
that helps you learn more about what the 23 pairs of chromosomes that make up your DNA can tell you about your ancestry, your traits, and your health. To find out more, to help with scientific research, to help make discoveries, and to learn more about your own DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity.